everyone. Uh, good morning. It is morning. Uh, I thought I'd make a quick video. Uh, it was some thoughts I had this morning. I had an early rise. Uh, I was in the gym this morning and I was listening to a, uh, a video. This is my mentor, Carol Smith. Uh, you can easily find him on YouTube. It's quite, he's got lots of videos uh, worth watching. Uh, so I was listening to one of his videos while I was doing a workout and it made me think about something. It's, it's a thing called pattern matches. Uh, I kind of talk a lot about pattern matches. And I probably think I to explain this, but it's between things that just come to us naturally and, and compare it to the things that come as a bit of a shock. Let's, let's put it that way. Uh, and one of the patterns that I kind of remembered and it kind of struck me at the time was I was on a course. I was up in Aberdeen. It was a massive building. And the door was a wee bit different, this great big door. But what happened initially was I went to the first door and it had a handle on the outside. Now a handle suggests you pull the door. So I pulled the door and it wouldn't open. Egg on face. The, the guys will have a wee laugh. So then you push the door to go in. But it's counterintuitive. That's not normally how the doors work. Usually if it's a push, there's a flat handle to put your hand against. But this is the handle. Right? So I thought you pulled it. And the next morning I arrived at the building, up to the door, and talking away, you're in the daydream world, and I intuitively grabbed the handle and pulled it. And of course it didn't open, I went, oh, that's right. So I pushed in. So I did that three days. It took me three days to automatically lay down a pattern where I didn't have to think. I just walked up to the door and pushed, grabbed the handle and pushed it in. This door is different. So I had that uh, pattern laid down in my brain now. And of course, this has to be a sloppy pattern match because that's only that particular door. Most doors work the intuitive way. But what I was comparing it to was, uh, I've, got a, I've got a pot that I use, when, when I'm, I like to boil eggs in the morning, especially after I work out, get some eggs on. And one of the pots I used, once it was warm, it had a metal handle. So the eggs have been boiling, seven minutes of boiling, they're ready. I went to pick it up, the handle was roasting. I picked it up, oh, I put it down rather quickly. Uh, I grabbed a dished cloth, wrapped it around it, and then moved it over to the sink. So the very next day I was putting on eggs, opened up the drawer where the, where the pots are, and there's the, the pots, one with plastic handles, one with wooden handles, and the metal handle, I put it straight down. The thing was, I knew not to use that pot. I learned that lesson very quickly. It didn't take me three days, same as the door, same as the other pattern match. It was an instant pattern match. So the question is, why did I learn that lesson so quick? Is it Did it trigger something in the, the amygdala, the fight, flight or freeze? There's a lesson to be learned. Uh, don't forget this one because it's dangerous. So that kind of explains a lot of things that happens in our life where we have a, a bit of a trauma and we don't let go of the trauma. It's because it laid down very quickly and it's stored in memory and it's it's kind of fixed in here with super glue. It takes a lot of shifting. Whereas uh, that door I was referring to, the door that was counterintuitive, I quickly forget about that door. I, I don't think about it. When I go to doors, that door doesn't occur to me. I just open the door as I should. But when I go to pick up a pot with a metal handle, I remember. So that's how... Uh, that's how frights and traumas can register themselves in, uh, in the brain. If you want to know any more about this, give me a wee tinkle and I'll discuss it. All the best for now. Bye-bye.